Hello, you guys. Elizabeth Hefner here, Sapphire Ambassador, here bringing you chapters 13 and 14 of Get Over Yourself. And I couldn't have picked better chapters for myself. And um, even though I make the schedule, it was unintentional that I gave myself these chapters. I just kind of divide it up and say, hey, let's go with it. And I feel like I've talked a lot about this, these topics um, over the last year for sure on different calls and book clubs and snippets and videos. So I know that you guys are going to have so much to add because this is probably these chapters were a review and sparking more thought and how you could apply that to your life. So I'm really looking forward to hearing this from you too, hearing from you. So I love that she talks in chapter 13 about how valuable our time is. And it really reminded me of, yeah, like I really don't need to wash all these dishes. Like I told my husband yesterday, like, listen, I don't mind doing dishes. And that's the thing. That's the struggle. I don't mind doing dishes. I don't mind folding laundry. I don't mind cleaning toilets. And I want my children to see me working because I want them to learn to work too, right? But making sure that I am delegating. I talked to Jessica Hugendorn last year in Mexico and she was sharing the same thing. And she figured that she is worth $1,500 per hour. And so really thinking about that and realizing our worth and what our, what our income potential is. There are things that our husbands cannot do, that our children cannot do. They cannot be sending messages to people, right? They can't be out there sending messages to people, responding. They can't be training your team, but they can certainly fold towels and empty trash and wash dishes, right? And learn, and it really helps them to learn to work. So I really encourage you to dream big, to write down that, what your goal income is. And I legit want you to quadruple that because I don't think you're dreaming big enough. And then I want you to figure that out. So how many hours do you want to work in a week? How much do you think is reasonable? And I think like, honestly, for myself, like I like to work. I am a workhorse. I always push myself to do a lot. And so I don't want to work like 20 hours a week. That's not enough. And so I put like 30 hours a week, you know, and it's quite a bit of money per hour. I'm like, yeah, that's right. Y'all can do some dishes. So <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, but seriously, I want you to write that number down. I want you to times it by four and then figure out that value. And that can even be one of your positive affirmations. Like my plexus work or my work is worth $2,000 per hour, whatever that is, and putting it out there and just really thinking about how you're spending your time for sure. And I've talked about this several, several times, like time blocking. It's great. Like time blocking is beautiful. However, no two weeks, no two days, no two Tuesdays are ever going to be the same. At least they have not been for me. However, having a flow to our day, having a hard stop to our day, having time built into our day to be productive and not just get caught up in doing what needs to be done and not making time for our business. So I love that she talks about putting everything into your calendar, looking at your calendar on Sunday, talking to your husband about what needs to be tackled and what needs to, what you need him to do, what you're going to do. And then, you know, spending that 15 minutes, just touching base, coming up with a plan. And then every day you're like, Hey, remember you're taking this kid to dance or basketball or whatever. Um, I love that she talks about scheduling those non-negotiables. So for me, there's lots of non-negotiables. There is sleep, there is going to the gym, there is eating relatively healthy. Like those are non-negotiables for me. And so I'm putting that into my life and then we're going to schedule things around that, right? And then really kind of paying attention to your IPA, making sure that you're putting that IPA in pockets of time, which is actually super, really, 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 really doable. It's really quite doable to fit these IPA sheets and breaking it up into four. Lauren just did that whole call. Wow, I have a problem here. Um, Lauren just did that whole call on um, the winning day and doing our IPA a little differently. Like that can be split up. And I actually had a couple full files that I wanted to show you. So that's what I was trying to pull up here because I accidentally had closed them. 
Um, but anyway, and then paying yourself first. So this was really cool too. Thinking about how, okay, I need to make that graphic for book club. I need to schedule those coaching calls. I need to call the doctor. I need to like whatever. But if I'm not doing my IPA first, then I'm not paying myself first. You have to put in that time that is going to give you that paycheck first. And there are lots of important parts of that because following up with our team and our workers is so important because we need the duplication in order to have a, a residual income coming in, but definitely making sure that we're doing our work first and getting your list ready. There's so many ways to do this. You have to kind of think what works for you, get out your planner and write your five to six names for every single day of the week ahead of time. And then, you know, over the weekend, that's your follow-up time or whatever. Um, so however you want to do that is super cool, but making sure you're being intentional and making sure you're taking the time to actually do it. So this, I just wanted to show you this. I need to get these into our team page and Lord help me. Um, where is the screen share? There it is, the green button. Okay, so this, somebody give me a thumbs up if you can see that. Okay, so this winning day worksheet, super cool, right? We've talked about this. Get your points written down every day of where you're at every day of the month so you know how to compare your apples to apples and you're not like, well, I don't know what my points were on the 13th last month, you know? And then you have, very specific things to get social, 30 minutes, set a timer, 10 comments on non-plexus people, creating your content. And there's these cute little check boxes, right? This is all stuff that Lauren also covered on that call that she did so awesomely. And then 60 minutes, let's make money. So here we go, income producing activity. Start a plexus conversation. Here's your three new people you're reaching out to. And this, uh, this should be business and products, right? We talked about that. And then following up. So my probably my favorite whole box on this whole sheet is this. Because when we do 531 and we're really not, we if we're reaching out to more than who we're following up with, then it's this imbalance, right? And I have always done tons of follow-up and tons of new reach out, but tons of follow-up because the fortunes and the follow-up, right? So I love that. And then we have our personal development. So even if it's a 10 minute video, even if you're watching a 60 minute video over the course of four days, because you could only have 15 minutes or whatever, you can still take that 15 minutes you listen to and think about one thing that you can start, stop or change. And then business is a specific box of business conversations, right? Follow up about the business, making sure we're, we're doing our retention and then getting on the phone with our people. Um, so getting who am I and being intentional about who am I currently developing? If we're like, I'm going to help all my happy product users go silver this month, then it's kind of a big chunk. It's not unachievable. It's just a big chunk, right? So breaking that down and being intentional and making sure we're not letting our coaching of them fall through the cracks. And then the winning week here, this is cool, right? So events, messenger events, in-person events, group chats, Zoom events, whatever that is, coaching calls, getting people into three-way calls with your sponsor or your downline bringing you three-way calls. And then this, Brittany Howard is the one that developed this. I'm trying to edit this or get whatever, make it so it says rock your purpose and pink power, but pink power calls, rock your purpose calls. Again, what do I need to stop, start or change? And then our book study. So that's tonight, right? What do I need to stop, start or change? And then our win for the week. So we have a spot. What are, what was our win? And our win could be a lot of things, but then we're also checking in with, you know, our actual quote unquote numbers. So pretty simple very, very accountable, right? I love how accountable that truly is. Okay. So I'm working on getting those into our Rock Your Purpose, okay? And then we can utilize them as you see fit. But I do encourage you to use some sort of written IPA sheet at least for a while 
to make sure that you are doing the work. You know, it's easy to be like, well, I did my plexus work and I wrote down three names in my planner, but are we really doing the work? Are we really getting into that personal growth and stuff? So something to think about. And then um, she, in the book, encouraged, you know, a month of commitment of having that 15 minute powwow with your spouse the five minute powwow every day with your spouse, putting everything in your calendar. And I was anti-electronic calendar for a really long time. My husband kept saying, you should do this, you should do this. Well, I do both. I do my electronic calendar so I can pull it up when I'm out, when I am talking to a person at the gym and they're like, yeah, I wanna sign up. Okay, let me put you on my calendar, but then I can come home and write it on my paper. And I like the, I like the paper so I can see it all at one time or I can pull my electronic calendar up on my computer and see it all at one time, right? But I like to, I'm very visual that way. So it really hasn't been that cumbersome to do it in both places. That was my, one of my biggest holdbacks was, oh my gosh, I'm going to be doing everything twice, but it's really not a big deal. So doing that, that is good. And then I love how she talks about a stop doing list is just as important as a do list so that we can delegate, right? We can figure out what is most important. Is it most important to take our kids to the park 12 days a week? And I'm exaggerating, but what is it that we can modify? What is it that we can change in order to be able to complete all of these amazing things that we want to do? And then um, honing in on coaching calls. So this is something I'm definitely working on being really intentional on coaching calls, not having quite so much personal contact, which is hard for me because you guys are my people and I want to know what's going on in your life so I can pray for you and support you and be there as much as I can. But really we want to make sure that we are setting other times aside for that as well, right? Um, and then, yep, I already went over that. And then <laughs> working with our body. Like I... I'm not as much of a morning person as I used to be. So if I'm like, I'm going to get up at 5 a.m. and do IPA, that's not a good time for me to do IPA. That's not a good time for me to do a Bible study. It's a good time for me to get up and get my butt to the gym so that I'm awake and I'm alert and I'm doing something physical and it's good for my joints that want to give me a hard time in the morning, right? So I have found activities and flows of my day that make my power hours, my tiger hours, the most productive. So your schedule and your day is going to look different from other people and in different from day to day, and that's okay. And I love how she mentioned using online boarding, onboarding systems and training as much as possible and not feeling like you have to just meet with every person to go over every little thing. Like, yes, we're going to do that at times, but it isn't um, super necessary and it makes us very duplicatable because it means I can train somebody on the West Coast, which means a West Coast person can train someone on the East Coast, right? We have this flexibility, it makes it very duplicatable. Of course, not getting distracted by our to-do list, the fridge, our children, the dog, all the things. If you have known me at all, it's easy to have a lot of moving parts around you to be pulled in those directions and having to say no. Having children ruined me. I used to be able to like clean my kitchen. Now I'll be cleaning the kitchen and go, hey, this needs to go in the bathroom or upstairs or wherever, and then get upstairs and start organizing the books on the shelf, whatever. Like it just ruined me this, all these things out of place. Right. And so I've worked on that too. Nope. The bookshelf, the books can be laying down in a mess. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. It doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> and then talking about checking email once a day, especially for Plexus. We really don't have like 20 emails coming from corporate. We don't communicate with our team in email. So it's not like you need to be checking your email a hundred times a day. And once a day is sufficient, get in, be intentional, set time aside to get into your email. So this is where you have like maybe your auto shipments for other stuff, your Amazon or whatever, get in once a day and be intentional to get that done. So you're not like, oh yeah, I do have to come back and change that and fix that, but I don't have time to do it right now. Right. How many of us are guilty of that? So making sure that we're not getting distracted and then really limiting that Facebook, Instagram scrolling time and that time of checking in, it's really tempting. Like I just put up this really good post and I can't wait to see how many people comment and 
I put up the like magic post. So I got to keep checking in because I got to message these people right away. Like, yeah, if you're putting up a magic post, you need to make sure the timing of that is when you're going to have time. You don't do that at 8 a.m. as you're walking into work for eight hours. That's not good. And when you have a meeting on your lunch break, which I have issues with too, but <laughs> that's another story. Um, you you set that post up when you like, hey, honey, I need you to take the kids to the park this evening. And then you're going to stop by McDonald's and feed them or wherever. Don't do McDonald's, but um, here's your picnic basket, feed them there. I'm working. And then you're going to put your magic post up so you can be responding. You're going to plan for that. Um, and then you can delete the Facebook app and Instagram app off of your phone, delete them, uninstall them. So you can stay in your messenger and not get distracted. Right now. I do like to refer to the people's personal information. So I have more stuff to talk to them about and can be intentional with that. But Maybe it's your time to unplug and this is in the next chapter, but maybe you do need to just delete them off so that they're not there to distract. Uh, closing all your programs, silencing notifications. I have pretty much everything on silent so that I'm in control of when I check things and I'm not being like pulled into like a ding, 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 and I need to go check. Nope, my phone's on silent, my messenger's on silent, my texting are on silent, my phone, my watch alerts me if it's my mom or my husband, you know, if there's an emergency type thing. Otherwise, it's me controlling my reaction to those new messages coming in. And then, of course, we've talked so much about the slight edge, atomic habits of habit stacking, and when can we do two things at once where it's one task is non a non a no brainer so that we can do something that does require our attention because constant multitasking is not productive but when we can fold laundry and listen to a training view training video that's going to work because we know how to fold laundry without having to think about it um driving if you're not in traffic or some crazy situation, hopefully you can listen to a training video, get your coaching calls in. And chapter 14, taking care of yourself. So Jackie and I, we've had to remind one another to take care of ourselves. Um, we had a meme for a while. It was like kettle, calling the kettle black, you know, and we're like, we're like, why aren't you sleeping? I don't know. Why aren't you sleeping? Like, <laughs> wait. We were, you know, not doing what we should, but we were excited and we were wanting to grow and wanting to help our people and we sacrificed and look where we are. So it was worth it, right? To so totally worth it. But the not taking care of ourselves definitely takes toll on your body if you continue to do that. So having an overall balanced life is the goal, not in a completely perfect balanced day every single day. Okay. And so we have to understand that we can be gracious with ourselves, be gracious with our children, right? It's okay. And definitely like Heather said in the chat, you're going to push. There are going to be months where you are pushing and you're going to have those crazy, like whatever, not sleeping as much, or maybe you're not working out for three hours a day, whatever. I, don't, I do not work out for three hours a day. I'm like 30 to 45 minutes is about where I'm at, but you get the point. There are times where we do push ourselves and go through that, but that's not our normal, right? And learning to say no, learning to delegate. Again, this is where I expect you guys have lots of things to um, add in here because we have talked about it so many times, but finding childcare, getting a high school helper that can come over when you're there and then they can help with whatever. I used to have a girl come after school twice a week I paid her like $8 an hour. This was several years ago. She'd fold laundry. She would take the kids for a walk. She could drive. So she'd run to the grocery store and pick up the three things I needed. She would wipe my cabinets down that were all gross, you know, whatever it was I needed so that I was multiplying myself, right? It's hard to be worth your time to wipe counters it just, or cabinet fronts, like, ugh, not worth our time, right? But it's kind of important that it gets done occasionally. So hire that done. Make your kids do it. It'll be better than not being done at all. And making time for that personal development time, right? Time to unplug. And it's going to be different for everyone. Like I'm good. I don't need tons and tons of downtime. In fact, I feel useless if I have too much downtime. Um, 
but there are times when I am completely on downtime. Like Hawaii is like my downtime. I'm like, oh my gosh, no one's asking me for anything. That's why I tell my husband, like you decide where we're eating. You decide what excursions we're doing. I don't care because I don't want to make any more decisions. And then, um, hold on. Okay. And then setting your tone for the day when you get up, not just jumping on your phone, jumping on messenger, jumping on email, whatever that is, setting your phone away, putting it in the kitchen and using your normal alarm to get up and setting your day. I'm reading a book called The Miracle Morning. And it's not right next to me, um, slowly reading it slowly, but getting through that. And I'm, it, it really talks about having a morning routine that you can do that's sustainable. And you get so excited about that. You can't, just can't help to do it. And that's pretty cool. And then making sure we're celebrating the victories and giving ourselves grace. So, um, Lauren is really good about this scheduling in a spa day or scheduling in a pedicure or scheduling in something that is just for her um, because it's like this reward for getting through the, the tough week or getting through all the IPA and, and doing that. So really important. I'm not as good about it. And I, she emphasizes so much in the book that when she switched and made those changes, it really helped her business grow a ton and it really makes sense, right? We can't pour from an empty cup. So and giving ourselves grace, our children grace, our husband grace, our team, right? We're all about sprinkling grace all over, but still holding people accountable and wanting, wanting to encourage people to get their work done. So that's what I have for you. I can't wait to hear from all of you. I love this book. I love how like direct it is, how common sense it is, um, things that we just tend to forget about. Um, one of the things I do um, in my busy life is I definitely have to schedule those office hours. Um, I usually, um, during breakfast is when I kind of check my back office. I look at my perks report. I, you know, jot down my points for the day. Um, it takes me three minutes to do. I make note of who I need to reach out to after work if they you know, are on my perks report list. Um, and then off I go to work. But then after work, the very first thing I do um, is I go hide somewhere <laughs> for a half hour. Like I will um, either sit in the car on the driveway or I'll go to the library, like just on the road from my house, just somewhere for 30 minutes before I walk in. Because when I walk in the door, like, I love my family so much um, and they like literally attack me when I walk in the door. Um, it's super cute that they're teenagers and they still are excited when I come home. Um, and my husband, so like my son usually pulls me around the yard to look at all the flowers that are blooming or something like they always have stories to tell me. So once I walk in the door, um, it, I can't, I need, you know, like that's my time with my family. Like I want to hear their stories of the day. They want to like see me, they, they're, uh, you know, just so excited. So I do go hide for a half hour um, in between work and home. And then I do, um, you know, some of my reach outs uh, to my people. I get about 30 minutes of my IPA done. Um, and then in the evening when the teenagers are now hermits and they go back to the room and, you know, we don't hear from them, then I, um, you know, do a little bit more. And then of course, depending on the day and, you know, when I have coaching calls scheduled, I, you know, tend to schedule those on specific days. Um, but being intentional with your time, especially when you are working full time and you do have a busy family and you have a lot on your plate, um, being proactive is huge. Um, you know, I wish I could say all weeks I was action stacked uh, lately with, you know, one starting senior year and one going off to college. It's, you know, there are weeks where I'm great. And then, you know, weeks where I'm just doing the basic two, two, two. Uh, so there's many different ways you can do your IPA. It's just, you have to do something every day. Just be consistent with it. And you'll have seasons. Um, my daughter's moving into state tomorrow. So this week has been a little bit um, more focused on getting her packed, spending a little bit more time with her, one-on-one -on -one time and so forth where next week, you know, I plan to move up to the action stacked again um, and kind of go full, 
full force ahead. So you'll have seasons and weeks in your life where you'll fluctuate, but I'm doing something every single day. And I think that's key. And, and when you are working full time, you definitely have to schedule that in. I loved the chapter, even though it was a review that talked all about scheduling your time too. Rochelle, you had a lot of really great points with that, but I think it's so important because when I do coaching calls with people, a lot of times, no matter who it is, what level they are, it's struggle for them to figure out what am I going to do when I sit down to actually work. And then a lot of the time that they're get that, that they have to like sit down and work is figuring out who they're reaching out to, who they're following up with. So if you can do that Sunday, look at what your week looks like, write it in your calendar already. So that when you sit down on Wednesday, when you finally have that half an hour, you're like, oh yeah, I already have these three people that I knew I wanted to reach back out to today, or yeah, I looked last night and these were the two new reach outs I was going to do today or whatever it is. It just saves you so much time and it keeps you from scrolling because sometimes even what I am guilty of too, is I'm like, okay, I'm going to do some reach outs, but I haven't planned for this yet. And then how much time do you spend scrolling, looking for names of people that you haven't talked to yet? And then you wasted half of your IPA time scrolling and then you're scrolling and you find a video or you find some something else and you're not even doing what you intended to do anyway and that's when you get caught up in not actually working so I thought that was a great reminder and I'm probably gonna talk to everybody that's not on this book club right now about that this week about really being intentional about scheduling your time because it'll save you time, you're more productive and you'll probably be able to do even more reach outs than you have been doing because you're actually planning for it. So I thought that was important, even though it was a review, it was a necessary review. Lauren. Okay. I love that one. I watched your stories about getting sucked into reels and I literally have a new mantra that is you will not watch reels today, Nicole. You are not on Facebook to watch Reels, Nicole, because <laughs> literally my brain has been so full, I feel, since convention with just life and everything, that Reels are like a fantasy world that are so easily just literally sucking my brain away. Um, I love these. So I get you on that. Um, I love these chapters for so many reasons. One, yes, a lot of review. Um but I also just this week reprinted, and y'all know if you've heard me talk about this ever, reprinted my entire Facebook list. I tried using Doe, and I'm an appy techie person, and I didn't like it, but that's just me. Um, I prefer pen and paper alphabetical lists of visual names that I can write notes to and check boxes on. Um, did it take time? Yeah, it took me about 35 minutes to download it and do all the whatever but just in the printing on the new fresh paper i already came across like three quote rock stars that i somehow have like let fall to the abyss since covid um because they weren't face-to-face -face people um which they were prior to covid so just these great reminders of being super intentional with why we're doing what we're doing and how to do it um i just love this whole the whole first chapter and the second chapter too. I am due for a petty that will happen next week now that school's back in session, but all the things so, so good. Y'all have got to have more to say than our amazing first three con comments here. Thank you, Rochelle and Lauren and Nicole. Very good. Very, very good. My disclaimer with, with dough is that I do not love dough. However, 
Doe allows me to create lists so that I don't have to worry about which planner page did I write them in. And it allows me to have a starting point if I'm like unexpectedly waiting for a child or something and I have time instead of scrolling reels, it gives me something to go to very quickly to get something done productively. And so I still write in my planner. I don't just use the dough, but it does help to guide some of what I'm doing. And it's in an electronic format that I won't lose. So it's def I still do this combination, but dough does allow me to have lists. So I have my dream team list. I have my, hey, party on 823 lists that I invited to. So I don't forget to go back and follow up with them, that sort of thing. I create a lot of lists in there and then use all the lists really. Um, and that again, it, it creates this, oh gosh, now let me flip through my planner to last month. I don't have to flip through my planner and find which page in July I wrote something on you know, exactly what day did I do that? It's in a list electronically for me, so. Oh, and really quickly, I love those sheets that you shared. Can't wait to get a fixed version, but um, for a couple of reasons, I think in the first probably year of quote, doing IPA as a newbie and whatever, I think I thought I was doing a lot of stuff. Um, but I was doing a lot of scrolling and looking and considering of who I might reach out to um, and not actually intentionally connecting, adding to giving value, any of that. Um, so I love, especially the daily one, that if you're writing it all down physically, at the end of the week, you're going to know if you really did what you think you did. <laughs> or if you just rabbit trailed down the real world, <laughs> or if you really only intentionally had three conversations, not 12, which was your goal for the week, right? So I love that. Um, I think it's just as important for new people as it is for people five years in to legitimately take a written out look. And she talks about writing down your you know, your day. And we've been talking a lot about that with Slight Edge and Atomic Habit. Like, what does your day legitimately look like? Um, because we are so, you know, fly by our pants sometimes. I'm literally sitting in a high school parking lot that my kid does not attend because I need to show for someone else's kids tonight. But I knew I was going to be in my car. So I packed my book early into my bag. So I'd at least have it to reference when I got to sit wherever I was going to be tonight. Um, I think we just sometimes, like you said, my day was perfectly planned until it wasn't. Um, but being prepared is helpful. And if I had missed this call, I would have had to try to fit it in at a different time this week. And that would have been even more complicated. So planning is great, but learn how to Go with the flow and give grace for sure. Um, and tracking our work is just super, super important. So one of the things that I find helpful is my planner. I've got three different sections in it and I didn't bring it downstairs with me. I had to run after volleyball to come down here. Um, but I've got one section. It's um, like the stuff that has to be done, like the appointments for dentists and kids or, or whatever. The next section is personal. So like something I'm doing to fill my bucket a little bit. And then the last section is plexus, the stuff like my calls, my different things, my people I'm following up with. And then there's another three lines of um, new reach out. So that really helps um, keep me on track. And then on the left hand column, um, there's a thing where I can put goals for the week. So making sure I'm filling that out is helpful. And then um, I can always reference back to, oh, when did I speak to Laura? Oh, sh sh there she was. Or, you know, when you've got a new person writing that um, a couple weeks ahead or something so that you can remember, oh yeah, I got to follow up with them or um, those different kinds of things. Um, I've found that to be really helpful because it's easy to kind of squirrel out at times. And I want to be intentional with my time um, because my time is very valuable and I want to also be able to show other people who are busy, um, 
that it is doable if you're intentional with your time. So it, it really is. So those are, those are some of my tips that I've found to be helpful. Just a simple tip is that if you, no matter where you write it down, if you plan ahead of time and write it down, you have to open it back up on that day and actually do it. I think sometimes um, people are like really intentional about planning ahead of time, but then they don't actually do the thing. So don't forget to actually do the thing that day too. I think a lot of us on this call are really good at that. And I'm not calling anybody out. I'm just saying I've seen that before where they're like, I planned on it. And then I didn't actually open my planner and see who I had written down that day. So don't forget to actually do it. And then this is a little unrelated, but I've been reading a lot and listening to a lot of things about just motivation, because sometimes it's not necessarily that we don't know what to do. It's that we don't feel like doing it, but you still have to do it anyway, right? We're not always going to be motivated for anything. So we have to not let our emotions guide our actions. And if we plan ahead of time, it makes it a little bit easier to say, this is my list today. Not that we're checking it off as a to-do list, like, okay, got it over with, but it helps when you're not feeling the most motivated to have a plan so that it just is part of your routine and it can just be part of your discipline that you've already made for yourself. And then people aren't falling through the cracks as much either. So I guess what I'm saying is just plan ahead so that you can't really make an excuse for yourself for not doing it, right? Because it's already right there for you. That's such a good point, Lauren. I um, I do that intentionally because I know there's going to be a day where I am not going to want to do this, right? Like there's a day in my week where like, surprise, we can have the grandbaby tonight. And, you know, we have to, you know, so my evenings get thrown for a loop or surprise the uh, baseball games we scheduled for tonight and wasn't planning on it. So your day turns completely around or you have to work late or something comes up and then you just get home and you're just like, oh, I'm just not motivated to do this. But um, it's not, you know, being motivated is not what drives you. You know, we're not motivated to do things, you know, like parenting or go to work every day or whatever it is, but we do it anyways. So we, so I open my planner and I look at it and I say, it's here. I know it's going to take me 15 minutes. That's it. And then once you do it, and then all of a sudden the conversation starts, then you get into it, then you get excited. And then it kind of drives you to kind of finish those conversations and, um, you know, complete it. Um, and then your IP is done. So, you know, some days, you know, I leave the house at 630 in the morning. I don't get home until 830 at night. And the last thing I want to do or feel motivated to do is IPA. But I open my planner. It's right there. It's all laid out for me you just have to do it. And then once you do, it's not, it's not bad. Cause let's face it, we're sitting on our couch or in our recliner, messaging people, talking to people, connecting to people. It's not hard. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's, it's super easy and it takes no physical effort whatsoever. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think also when we are in like a slump and we haven't been gone for 14 hours, like just whatever it is, I find if I can get myself doing something that I see the progress of like, Hey, I'm just going to clean this bathroom really quick. You know, like I said, my kids are cleaning, they're doing stuff, but at the same time, y'all know, when you ask a child to do something, you have to make sure that they did it too. So until they're in really good habits and really good systems, which I feel like we just, you know, it's part of parenting. You're going to keep working on that is okay. Let's, you know, cause my kids go in really good spurts and then I'm like working while they're cleaning and then they get you, they kind of start dwindling off and aren't doing their work. So then I have to clean with them again for a while to get them back into this system of doing it themselves. And there's still stuff that I do, you know, um, I do my own laundry. <laughs> so if I can go fold my laundry real quick and put it away really quick, then I'm like, yay, I did something. Now let me take that energy over into this next thing that I get to do, um, kind of thing, or this mess is really bothering me. So instead of 
cleaning my entire closet, I'm going to take one shelf, take everything off the one shelf, manage that in 15 minutes, get that bag of Goodwill donations out to my car. So it's not also sitting in my closet and in the way, right? And I've had another, a, another sense of accomplishment. So then some of that, sometimes we get, I don't know, nervous energy, right? Like a lot of things on our mind or a lot of things going on or just whatever it is. And so being able to do something physical like that and seeing the progress means I can take that into my plexus or my messaging because you don't always get in a response right away. You know, you're waiting, you're waiting to hear back from that dream team or that you finally message on that chicken list, you know, and that part is out of our control. And I love that we can, you know, she talks in here about saying no. This is another point where we do that all the time. Like we're told no all of the time. Hey, Mr. Smith, did you do your home exercise program this week? No, I didn't. Well, we're used to it in our professional world. Okay. Not surprised, right? Like, so then you review the importance. Let's go over it here. Do you have any questions? Okay. When do you think you could fit it into your day. Okay, how about when you get to your desk at work, you do this and this every morning. How about when you get into your car to go home from work, you do these two, whatever. Maybe it's some isometric shoulder stuff, right? We're giving our patients clues and tips on how they can fit it into their day. So why wouldn't we do the same for ourselves? But also the same token, we're used to being told no. So why don't we say, I'm sorry, that's not going to fit into my schedule right now. And that way you are like, Hey, my business hour is to business hours are to do my plexus work at this time. So when your kids or your husband or your best friend or whomever, I mean, we don't always want to tell them no, but we're showing them, well, I'm sorry, I don't have a room for that on my calendar right now. Like I'm, I have an appointment right now. You do have an appointment. It's with yourself. Let's look at some other times that I can be available to you. Right. I had a friend need a ride to get her car. Um, her husband was working. She had needed to get her car. It was fixed and da, 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 da. And I'm like, well, I'm actually going down there for the kids cross country. I can totally take you in the morning. It's just going to be early. And I like, cause they were like, she was like, well, can you do it at like noon was the original request. And I'm like, and that's where I get stuck. Like as a person, as a friend, you're like, yeah, of course I can take you at noon. It Even if I didn't have cross country in the morning to take kids to and stuff, noon to run an errand like that is a total disruption to my entire day, right? I was so thankful that I'm like, actually I'm going in the morning. I can take you then. There was no way that I was going to go down to Brighton and back and then do it again, right? There's just, that would have not worked. And I definitely would have said no, but I was so grateful that I wasn't going to have to say, I'm sorry, I have an appointment at, at one o'clock, right? Like I would have, I would have had to have been, been strong in that, but as people, we want to help our friends, right? We want to do those things. However, when we're constantly doing things like that, then we're not saying yes to paying ourselves first. We're not saying yes to building the life that we're dreaming of because you have to make sacrifices for long-term gain. But that is definitely where you're putting those business hours in and saying, I'm sorry, I have an appointment at that time. That's not going to work. It's been, we were carpooling between myself and two other families to get these kids to cross country and back. And it's been great. I'm like, hey, I can do Fridays. I can do this. Can someone do Thursday? I have a meeting at 1030. So I could have done it. It just meant I would have been running and it's stressful to be like, they're starving when they get home from cross country. You know, all the, you know, there's all these moving parts of that. It puts me really rushed to be on my meeting at 1030. And one of the moms is like, sure, I can do, I can do Thursday. Okay, perfect. You know, and we are, we're working together through that. And I didn't feel badly saying, Hey, I have a meeting at 1030. Do you mind? driving that day. Right. Um, so really kind of, you know, what was it? Tori Birch didn't miss a meeting with Neiman Marcus because she didn't have childcare. Right. But when we're doing this work from home and it's plexus and it's the side gig, sometimes I don't think we're taking it as seriously as we should. That's a temptation. And I know that 
coming up the ranks to this point, I gave up a lot of things and I don't regret it at all because now I'm able to say yes to some of those things and have the time to do that. But if I would have said no to my business and said yes to those things, I wouldn't be where I am right now. So I was listening to the book as I was folding laundry today. Um, so definitely multitasking here. Um, but I was, okay, so I was picking stuff from my garden when I was listening to the first chapter when she was talking about time. And that was the first thing that hit me is I am way underestimating the time that it takes me to do things. And um, yeah, I'm not using my time effectively for a lot of things. I need to ask for the help from our babysitter who's offered it this week um, since she knew my husband was gone for several days. And I was by myself with a girl starting school and I did not take her up on that, which I wish I would have. Um, anyway, next week will be different. Um, but the time thing and then, um, goodness, you were just talking about it saying yes to too many things, especially in the summertime that has been really challenging for me. And um, after we've come back from several vacations, I've tried to be a lot better about saying, no, I'm sorry. You can go over to the neighbor's house if you want to. You can take the kids, but I cannot go. I am busy and I need to get stuff done. I need to get my plexus done. I need to get chores done. So if you want to do that, that's fine. Please take the kids. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm staying home. And um, been a lot better about trying to set those boundaries for myself, even though I've been raised as a, yes, I can do that to help you person. So my dad's very good at it. And I've learned from him very well. Um, but when I do that, then I'm stressed out. And things don't get done to the best of their ability. And so I've realized, you know what? I need to listen a whole lot more when my mind says, no, you don't really have time to do that. And um, so that's definitely something I've been working on changing and will continue to work on changing and making more boundaries to um, help my plexus business more going forward. I love that. Thank you for sharing. I'm really proud of you because it's not, it's not always easy to do that. But it also really shows your husband how important your business is too when you're saying, oh, I'm sorry, instead of socializing with the neighbors right now, I'm choosing to get my business hours done because it's what's on my calendar right now. And that shows him that you're taking it seriously. So that's really good because that's, and I think that's in the next couple chapters, like the unsupportive spouse and whatever, not saying your husband's unsupport, unsupportive, but you know what? at times it's hard for them to see our effectiveness and our productivity and stuff. They don't see it. They see us on our phones and they think she's just plain word, whatever. Um, so, you know, it's, and then also sometimes, especially, you know, when people are first getting started and now the bonuses are blown, blown out of the water, but that used to be, we would get excited about a hundred dollar bonus, which is still incredible. I mean, hello, it's such a blessing for helping three people. You get a hundred dollars. Come on. And, but when your husband sees that you were on a call and you were on a book club and you were on this and you were messaging people and you only made, only made a hundred dollars, they're like, why are you spending all of this time? Well, because Elizabeth and Lauren and Jackie have all done this and now look at their paychecks. Now look, like you have to get that ball rolling. So taking that, taking that seriously and saying, having that boundary is really good, but also scheduling time in for, we talked about this on that whole call I did, right? Like how to work your business, working full-time, having little kids, like you still have to make time for your husband. You still have to make time for your kids. If you have good relationships with your neighbors, Yes, there has to be some time for them too, but maybe that's when, like my neighbor, I love hanging out with her, but I'm like, hey, you want to go for a walk? 
that way I'm not just standing in the driveway talking to her, right? We're getting that exercise in or something, so. All right, you guys got anything else to say? Thank you so much for getting on. Two more chapters, and then I put my book away. It's back there on the shelf, but The Five Levels of Leadership by John Maxwell starts September 8th, so I'm super pumped about that. And I'm really pumped about this schedule for that one because it's a deep book. It's a lot of content. It's a lot of thinking and applic application and researching and reflecting. And so we have a very, very, very reasonable schedule to achieve that. So I'm pumped about that too. So, all right, you guys have a good night.